Because I'm gonna brush my teeth because I have a dentist appointment today. And look out, Fred is now moving beyond the computer. He's already appearing in a commercial for text messaging devices on Nickelodeon. There kid, you go. Kid who is creating his own career. He sure is. It's really incredible the way that they can do that. 50 million hits. That's unbelievable. That well. is a lot. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Mindy Kaling, the Queen of England here. Today, I'm going to be talking about Fred. Fred Figglehorn was one of the original YouTubers in the early days of the platform. He was the first channel ever to reach 1 million subscribers, which was quite an impressive feat. Fred also starred in several movies, appeared on iCarly, and even released an album. However, one day Fred's creator got tired and moved on, which led to a drastic decrease in views. Nowadays, you might be hard pressed to even find someone who remembers him. This is the rise and fall of you. Nah, no, just kidding, it's the rise and fall of Fred. You're the next one. Fred Figglehorn was a character created by a 13-year-old named Lucas Cruikshank. Lucas grew up in Nebraska with seven other siblings and was introduced to video making by his older sister. His story began when his two cousins stayed at his house one summer, which led to the three creating a YouTube channel called JKL Production. His cousins John and Katie were the J and K, and Lucas was the L. As part of JKL, Lucas made multiple characters, one of which was Fred. In a decision that would change his life forever, Lucas then created a YouTube channel entirely for his Fred character in 2005. Interestingly, Fred's background was incredibly dark, and not like my skin color, but rather quite R-rated. He apparently lived with his drug-addicted and stripper mother. Fred was also abused, and his dad was on death row. On April 21st, 2008, Lucas uploaded his first video called Fred on Halloween. The video featured a young boy with a sped up high pitched voice wearing a Halloween costume. It wasn't anything special or highly produced and simply featured Fred talking casually to his viewers. However, later in the video, he spazzed out because he thought he broke his mother's camera. I have. I have temper problems. But I don't! Oh my god, I think I broke my mom's camera. She's gonna be so mad at me. What am I supposed to tell her now? PlayStation's broke, and so is the camera. Freaking damn it. Then Fred ended the video by singing. Tick tock, she's gonna be home soon. Tick tock, she'll be here soon. Yeah, whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah, whoa. Tick tock, she's gonna be home soon. Tick tock. She'll be here soon. Ironically, Fred predicted TikTok a decade before its inception. But seriously though, Fred's rapidly changing train of thought throughout the video made it exciting for viewers to watch. Receiving positive feedback, he continued uploading and soon developed his iconic introduction, Hey It's Fred. Hey It's Fred! In one of his most viewed videos ever, Fred loses his meds, he displayed his characteristic, energetic, and hyper style of humor. Or as I call it, crackhead humor. In the video, he made funny faces and screamed randomly, behavior filthy Frank would later adopt. If you're wondering why I'm acting rather extraordinary right now, it's because I haven't taken my pill. Don't tell my mom that I've lost my pills. Okay, well you know what I'm talking about. I have a condition where I need to take pills to activate like a normal human. I mean, even my teacher noticed I was acting weird. Earlier today, I drew a picture of a guy hurting a little kid, and my teacher was like, that's not appropriate for school. This type of entertainment was new and fresh at the time and attracted viewers to Fred's channel in droves. They loved his vlog style content and constantly wanted more. So, in a video called Fred Goes Swimming, he expanded his comedic style by making self deprecating jokes and performing slapstick acts. If you're wondering why I'm wearing my shirt while I'm going swimming, it's because I'm uncomfortable with my body. I'm ready to go inside the pool. One, two, three. Oh my god, it's cold! I love swimming! I love swimming! This pool is small! While this might seem commonplace today, it wasn't back in the mid to late 2000s. Remember, Fred was an early pioneer of the platform and was one of the first to make those types of videos. He vlogged a decade before Casey Neistat, jokingly poked fun of himself years before Jenna Marbles, and was at his prime before PewDiePie even uploaded his first video. In essence, Fred laid the foundation for other YouTubers, which explained why his videos were so irresistible to watch and garnered tens of millions of views. And well, Fred without a doubt dominated YouTube. From October 6, 2008 to August 20th, 2009, he was the most subscribed to channel. In addition, he was the first to hit the 600,000 to 1.3 million subscriber milestone. Fred's growth was so incredible, he was even interviewed on CNN. I think what makes people like Fred so much is that he's just like so innocent, and the facial expressions, and the voice, and the catchphrases. The real Fred is actually Lucas Cruikshank, a 14-year-old from small-town Nebraska. Cruikshank says he created Fred out of boredom to parody other online bloggers' trivial revelations. They explain their whole entire day, 
and they think that everyone's so interested in it. The 18 episodes include Fred goes swimming, gets detention, and loses his med. You either automatically love Fred or you automatically hate Fred. It's either one of the two. It's never really in between. This fed up voice may get annoying after you watch it a few times. In February 2009, Fred's fame spread to the rest of the mainstream media and he was featured on the show iCarly. Nickelodeon even made a trailer to prepare viewers for his groundbreaking appearance. Okay, are you ready for this? Look out, people! Because here comes Fred. 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 You're gonna see Fred. Interweb sensation Fred. Hey, it's Fred and I'm gonna be on iCarly. It's gonna be so awesome. You're gonna see Fred on iCarly. I love them. Fred on iCarly. Monday. 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 February 16th. It's so big. Or it could be really terrifying. What am I gonna do? What if it's like all embarrassing? Excellent question. What if they don't have a bathroom? What if I have to use an empty coffee can? Ah! Fred's introduction to the iCarly show was quite interesting. His character wasn't just there for a quick cameo, but instead became involved in a subplot. It began when a character on the show named Freddie Benson told viewers he didn't think Fred was funny. You don't wanna see another Fred video? Not really. Why not, fudge face? <laughs> because I don't think Fred is all that funny. Uh, do you know how popular his videos are? Hurt, Fred was later shown in a video saying he was going to delete his channel. Is dead. Oh, here it is, just posted an hour ago. Oh, click on it. Hey, it's me. If you saw the last night, Harley, then you heard Freddie Benson say he doesn't like my Fred videos. Because I don't think Fred is all that funny. Thank you for crushing my feelings. Now, I'm not gonna post any more Fred videos. Ever again. Internet, I click you goodbye. In response, Freddy was then bullied by fans of Fred. Oh, see you girls are fans of Fred. <laughs> oh dear, guys, guys. <laughs> Although seemingly silly, Fred's mini-drama on iCarly was ahead of its time. iCarly demonstrated the massive power a YouTuber could have and gave credence to the influence of the platform. On the show, Fred was treated like a Hollywood celebrity, which was groundbreaking for a YouTuber. In June 2010, he collaborated with the Annoying Orange and participated in a battle of the most annoying. Interestingly, Fred was so annoying he broke the arena. In September 2010, Lucas appeared in his first movie, which was aptly titled Fred the Movie and aired on Nickelodeon. It wasn't very memorable except for the fact that John Cena played his father. The film was poorly received by critics and got a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. In addition, its Wikipedia page claims it is considered one of the worst films of all time. Despite this, Lucas returned for a sequel called Fred 2 Night of the Living Fred in 2011. Although the movie performed slightly better than the original, it still garnered multiple negative reviews. Surprisingly, he was in a third and final film called Fred 3 Camp Fred, which flopped. In 2012, Lucas transitioned to television and was given his own Nickelodeon show called Fred the Show. It consisted of 24 11-minute episodes, but was canceled after one season. After failing to branch out beyond YouTube, Fred released an album called Who's Ready to Party and featured Weezer in his promotional video. Unfortunately, that venture didn't take off either. In 2014, Lucas got bored of his Fred character and decided to stop posting the very videos millions had come to know and love. He understandably just wanted to move on and try something new with his life. After all, he had become an adult and no longer desired to play a character who was supposed to be six years old. It would just be too awkward for him. He even revealed he was planning to kill Fred off back in in 2008. Don't get too attached to Fred. I have a few planned ways how I'm gonna kill Fred off. I thought he could get trampled by horses. Brooke Anderson, CNN, Santa Monica, California. So he changed his content and created a talk show called Figgle Chat where he interviewed various personalities. Unfortunately, this wasn't what his fans wanted and resulted in him getting hate mail. Hey, it's Fred and thank you guys so much for sending in all of your fan mail. Okay, so like 95% of it was hate mail. You see, they subscribed for Fred and not for other material. As a result, his views plummeted dramatically. On his YouTube page, you can see how he went from around 5 million views on the previous video to just 10% of that in the next one. Sadly, his new format just didn't appeal to his old audience even though he featured famous guests like I Justine and Perez Hilton. Eventually, Fred gave up the talk show and sold his channel to a South Korean company. They then uploaded several videos with a new Asian Fred who reenacted Fred's old hits. Hey, it's me, the new Fred! This too is good for oral hygiene. Good oral hygiene is important in life. In the end of the video, they even weirdly promoted their cereal. I have no cavities because of the good nutrients of Yesung Corporation cereal, which I eat as part of my daily breakfast. People with bad oral hygiene are unworthy to eat Yaksung cereal. They are even unworthy to be ground up with the shrimp to be put in the Yaksung cereal. This chocolatey goodness. The videos just weren't the same and lacked the originality Lucas infused into the character. 
So the company then switched gears and made a series called In Your Face where Jake Paul interviewed random people in public. And no, I'm not kidding. Oh, I didn't even see you there. I'm Jake Paul and this is In Your Face. Excuse me, um, do you wanna pie your mom in the face? Do you wanna pie your mom in the face today? Any remnants of Fred's fan base were stunned. The channel they watched for years went from fun vlogs with Figglehorn to the future founder of Team 10. It didn't make sense to anyone. After the public interviews failed to gain traction, the Korean company made another series called Questions My Parents Won't Answer. In it, different little kids asked random people on the street questions. I thought Obama was okay. He's gotta make some power moves in his shower shoes, you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. The videos performed horribly and were a clear signal the channel was dead. Not wanting to continue beating it with a dead horse, the Korean company posted their last video ever on Fred called Where Do Babies Come From in July 2015. Currently, Lucas is active on a new channel aptly called Lucas where he has over 3.2 million subscribers. On it, he posts vlogs, challenges, and sometimes even reacts to his old Fred videos. When asked if he regretted being Fred or appearing in the movies, he said he didn't. You really regret being in the Fred movies. Okay, let's talk about it. So many of these assumptions were like, you hate Fred, you regret being Fred. Like, wow, tell me how you guys really feel about Fred, okay? To be honest, I don't regret being in the Fred movies at all. It was so fun. I know they were rated a zero on Rotten Tomatoes, but it was so fun. I remember being on set and just being like, what the hell? Like, how am I filming a movie right now? What? This isn't real life. John Cena was there? Like, I still don't believe that was real. John Cena wasn't in it. It was like a fake John Cena. Like, what John mother effing Cena threw me onto a couch. Roughly. I do not regret that. Why would I regret that? In another video where he reacted to the first Fred movie, Lucas stated he hadn't watched it since he recorded the second movie about 10 years ago. It was evident he didn't reflect on his past and was comfortable with it. Personally, I'm pleased to see Lucas continue to upload on the very platform he helped mold. In addition, I noticed he made a TikTok for Fred called Hey It's Fred, which currently has over 1 million followers. He doesn't post very often on there, but it's still nice to see him pay homage to the very character that made him famous. Ultimately, the story of Fred is an interesting tale of a boy who captivated the internet with a character he created because he was bored, but then became bored by. His channel will forever have the accomplishment of being the first to reach 1 million subscribers, beating Smosh, Ray William Johnson, and PewDiePie. Lucas created something that captivated the hearts of millions and will never be forgotten. He helped pave the way for all future YouTubers, including myself. I truly do wish Lucas the best for his future and his channel. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving me a like and subscribing to my channel. Also, feel free to follow me at internetaj on Twitter for video updates or Instagram for gym selfies. I'm actually documenting my weight loss journey on Instagram. Oh, and we have a cool Discord if you want to talk on there too. Invite link is in the description. See you in the next one.